Sometimes I'm an ass and I light things on fire. It's usually cause I'm hot or I'm hungry or I'm tired. But anytime I look into your eyes, well, I'm suddenly twice the size. What you mean?
Sometimes I'm an ass and I light things on fire. It's usually cause I'm hot or I'm hungry or I'm tired. But anytime I look into your eyes, well, I'm suddenly twice the size. Welcome and good morning, everyone. My name is Michael Walker, and if this is your first time here, welcome. We are so very wrong about games. I see all sorts of audio bars, so I'm assuming we are good. Today, we have some exciting stuff. New big project. We're going to try to start playing a big game here on, on Twitch, and we'll see how that goes. Welcome to the Love, the love Meeples are here. How are you doing? They have another great Twitch cast as well. So first we're going to do is we're going to unbox Coffee Traders, which is a very light party game. And then we are going to play some Destinies by Lucky Duck Games. And we'll see how all of this goes. So hopefully you'll bear with me and we'll see how all of my best laid plans go to destruction. Good stuff. Don't steal. Stealing is not nice. How is everyone this morning? All right, so here we are, coffee traders. I weighed it this morning. It was eight pounds. So that should be fine. What is with this image at the bottom? I'll work on that later. It is fine for now. All right. So here we go. This is coffee traders. This is game nice light euro except it's not it's going to melt my brain i updated my uh brain plugs so it doesn't melt out of my face i think it's going to be a hard task just to unbox but never mind learn how to play it The money shot. Oh, look at that. Welcome to Naviri. So, yeah, stuff. Score pads that give you giant places to write tons of points. Single sided, good. Nothing like. These are the fields that you're going to be able to put out. These are the workmen that you're going to be putting out. These are uh, candy that comes with the game. Very nice. Save that for later. 
more fields. I think they come in three levels. So that one was level three. These are level one. Looks like they're even different thicknesses. So that's cool. Yes, Wizard of Lizard. We did play Micro Macro. We even played it here on Twitch and it worked out quite well. Yes, we will not be commenting on... Uh, I, the funny thing is I'm usually never on, on Twitter uh, and I definitely don't go in for any sort of gossipy stuff like that. We try to stick to uh, things that matter to our listeners and things that we uh, we feel need to be brought to your attention, not just uh, gossipy stuff like that. And uh, I only do negative reviews. I don't do any positive reviews. So if you're thinking I'm going to talk good about any games, I hate I hate this hobby. I hate all board games, and I only do this stuff because I enjoy the clicks and the popularity I get from being negative. Moving on, shall we? All right, and there's cats in this game. How can you not like a game that has cats? Like, I'm not sure. I'm going to have to look up the, the historical reference to cats in the coffee trade in Brazil, but uh, there you go. We'll see how that plays out. Actually, I got this set up today. How, how are those that going to come into play yeah not very good still need to work on some lighting but anyway there we go all right that is cats normally i'm not so worried about stuff being all over the place but I've got a full game to play after this so we're gonna keep things halfway tidy today more buildings there's even hot these are hospitals i believe there's all sorts of different buildings that you can build as well. I think in phase 19 of 37 phases. Personal workmen. And then here are the coffee beans. They're all different colored as well. So that's kind of cool. Coins. Nice metal coins. These are printed on one side. That's kind of cool. More coffee beans. Two, a separate two. This is a three. That's odd. Because I thought I was looking at the box and it says three to five. And then there's a two, two player rule book. Okay. Moving on. The trucks you can put out. You have donkeys that you'll put out on your fields as well. Because there's not enough stuff already. More stuff. The actual rule book with giant writing and tons of pictures. So I'm sure there's hardly any rules. You'd probably be able to hop right in. It's only uh, 39 pages. It's going to be fine. All right. This I did not look too much into. Uh, whether I just knew... This was going to be so heavy, I didn't even bother looking at the rule book online. If there was one, this is one I'm going to definitely need the components in front of me. And look it over. More trading huts. More. This is to track. I do know some stuff. This is to track your uh, actual different types of coffee beans. Everyone gets a player board. So this is just your personal player board. These are, like I said, the different tracks. You're going to keep how much different types of coffee beans you have. Buildings over here. Upgrades over here. Yeah. All right. We get purple. So that's always good. Man, that, that is really bugging me the way that that is not working the way it usually does. I played with it this morning. I should not have. All right. So to all the different player boards. Then the giant, these are all punch boards. I'll open those up in a second. Or I'll just put it to the side and totally forget about it. And then here's the board. Look at that. I always love when they print stuff on the inside of the box. This is apparently the deluxe version. It was the only version that was available to purchase. So that's not so I could have got another one. Let's see, make sure this doesn't cross the field of like the four other cameras I've got set up. Hit the microphone because it's, you know, a tiny board. 
that is. All right, so there's a place to, oh my goodness gracious. I'm trying to keep it somewhat together. All right, there we go. So there's paw prints over here. So something to do with the cats and the beans over here. And then there's like five different fields that you track all the different things and then more upgrades on the side. So this is all on top of your player boards as well. So yeah. I love heavy euros, but this is going to be something I'm sure. Punch boards. It's all on top. We also got a review copy in this morning, so I will unbox it on the next segment. We got uh, Quacks of Quiglinburg in. They want us to look at that. They got the new Alchemist uh, expansion, and we told them that we didn't have the base game, so they sent both. So we'll be able to tell you about that soon. So counters, animal counters, wild animal counters, maybe the cats keep rats out of the fields, I don't, not sure, there's toucan tokens here, little pictures of toucans, because it's a coffee game, I, I, I don't know, I wish I could tell you more, these are all the upgrades I was showing you, all the rectangle spaces that were all over the board, these are the different upgrades you can get so you're selling beans to coffee houses and you're it's it's going to be a lot we shall see and i will tell you about it and i'll be negative on purpose just so i get the clicks and the likes even if the game is good it doesn't matter that's what we do here on so very wrong about games Oh, don't forget candy. Save that. Let's give it out at Halloween. All right, let's switch. Oh, all right. I see. This is called Kalupe Luwak. Made by coffee that passes through cats that that's I'm looking forward to that all right let's see hopefully that there we go let's see it must be just that one scene all right here we are with destinies this is sort of like a story game I'm not 100 percent sold on why you need even have components but we shall see this is our character board. This is the hook of the game. These are our three different uh, skills that we have. We're going to play the nun today. Knowledge, dexterity, and strength. And it's numbers 1 through 12. And you're always rolling these two dice, but they're not normal d6s. They go to 1 through 4. And then you have these purple dice that you get to add if you wish. You're going to start with one and they refresh one every turn. There'll be other things that we do that will give us more. And we roll these and we compare it to the stat we're rolling against. And if we roll on or over these tokens, that's how many successes we have. So if we add these together and we get a 10 on a knowledge test, then that would be three successes. And we're gonna input that information and it'll tell us what happens. Does anyone have any questions before we get going here? So like I said, I already did the introductory thing. So we're going to go right into the main campaign. There will be spoilers here for people who are planning on playing this. So keep that in mind. It's true. I should have made coffee before I started. So what are the heaviest games people have played? 
or what's the heaviest game you want to play? Like what's on your shelf that's just so heavy that you can't play it? All right, let's get started. So we're going to play Nature of the Beast. It's the introductory one. I won't tell you about it, just in case. But we are going to play Feast of Famine. The one thing I didn't check was to see... I don't think you're going to get this audio, so I might have to... All right, so it's going to play... This is the only time there should be audio. Let me know if you can hear it. Yes, we have a nun, and she has crucifix, crucifix nunchucks. It's going to be great. Can't wait. Actually, we got five, five items. Let's put this over here. We're going to run out of room very quickly. So this is, the, like I said, this is the first time that I've uh, tried playing a full game here. Solo. So you have to bear with me. So there are two different ways you can play solo as challenger, which you're under a time limit or explorer. So we're going to just do the explorer version today. The year was lean and all the signs pointed towards a harsh winter. Nonetheless, people from the town of So gathered at a humble feast, knowing all too well that even their meager harvest was worthy of joyful celebration. It was enough for them to survive. Some gave their thanks to God, some quietly to powers older than that who were said to watch over the valley since the ages long forgotten. Some praised the work of men, those who managed to win their survival by their toil alone. But even this short moment of rejoicing was to be torn away from them. First came the storm that scattered the animals and raised the granaries, leaving them exposed to the elements. High water took away the bridge, leaving the valley cut away from the world. And then came the rats. In great swarms, they descended upon the remnants of the celebratory feast, devouring all in their path ravaging the winter storms. Amidst the chaos, a few saw a demonic figure commanding the swarm with lesser devils as its heralds. You are those few. All right, I'm going to assume that played out for everyone. Let me know if it did. So yes, on Mars, we did play it. I, I have my friend's copy. I can see it right up on the shelf because the pandemic, he has not come to pick it up. So it has been here forever. They have a Kickstarter on right now for the expansion. So for those who are interested on Mars, it's a chance to pick it up. What else have we got here? Here I Stand. Yeah, I, I remember playing that years and years ago. Don't remember too much about it. That's definitely another heavy one. Yes, victims. Star Wars Rebellion. Yes, it is also on the shelf. I need to get Mark to go through that. Mark hasn't tried it yet. It is a fantastic game, especially if you're a Star Wars fan. That's one of the reasons why we have not played it together, because he is just not. Well, he doesn't hate it, but he's not a super fan. All right. Did that play out? Did everyone get the audio? No one has answered me. We are going to play the nun today, as you can see on the sheet already. So we'll click the nun. We had to bring the good stuff. And then it will tell you to make sure you get the, 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 the nun character out. They are little, little tiny, little tiny figures. So here is our nun figure coming out to the wilderness, coming out to rid our little village of the rats. And then we start with the gold. It says to exhaust all of our purple dice. And we start with rosary item number eight as our starting item. And it tells you where to put the tokens 
for your skills. All right, let's move on. Did every player get their starting items and their skill sets? Yes, we did. We don't care. All right, we get to start with. We are on 14. Here we are in our little outskirts of the village. The remains of a, of a faded feast are still strewn about the main square. Place tile 14 face up as indicated. Done. The blacksmith's workshop is here. So he put the little figure of the blacksmith out. There he is. The blacksmith appears to be working as usual, but something seems wrong. Because he's unionized and he's working. Am I right? Hey -oh. Anyway, moving on. The aroma of fresh bread smells even better in this time of hunger. And we put out these little uh, sort of points of interest tokens. And it's something you can click on and you'll get more information and stuff to do. And then we have some other things out. These come out gray, so we're not sure what's there. So we have to move to see what's there. This is the town center lies to the south. We'll call it the south. They didn't say so. But all the compass little icons say it's this way. So we'll use those. In the distance, you see Seu's orchards. Put 40 here. We'll do. Some say a strange pond awaits in the mists of the wood. Put the 27 face down. All right. What next? It is your turn. Day one. And it always reminds you to refresh one of your purple dice. And, and so here we go. It's not an overly complicated game. What you get to do on your turn is you get to move to a location. If you move into an unexplored location, you have to stop right away. And then you get to interact with one of the things on the map. So in this particular case, we could interact with the blacksmith and he'll give us a list of things that we can work through with him. Or we can click on the bakery and we'll have a list of things that we can work through there. And then our turn will be over and we'll have to go to the next turn. We do have some fancy things we can look at with the nun things that we know here's the back of the card when you're playing with multiple players they don't get to see this and it'll tell it'll give us two different ways that we can win all right oh yeah Just quick note on trying to get this game to work because there are qr codes as you can see on all the cards it means oh thank you for following following necro daddy 80 all right, so like I'm saying, because you need to scan these QR codes, it needs a camera. So it means you have to not use one of the cameras. <laughs> anyway, to get it working was a pain. So we have two ways that we can uh, win this scenario. We can get a hold of a couple of relics. We have to perform the purification ceremony. You must prepare by destroying two ritual artifacts in Christian shrines. Or you, we can gather a holy procession. You will need followers. Recruit three of them by helping the townsfolk in need. It says when we're ready to go, we have to find the chapel in the convent to fulfill our destiny. I'll read the little story here. Let's see if my old man eyes can read it. Because I didn't have my glasses here. But anyway, when the devils came and brought with the rats with them, you saw them for what they truly are a punishment, and you know it's up to you to bring back the misguided into the fold. And when it is done, God will surely cleanse the land of the foul vermin. One way or another, you will turn this valley into a place of worship. All right. So I think we'll just putter around. I've not played this one before, so we'll putter around and we'll sort of see what we 
start leaning towards depending on what direction we go and you guys can help out you can tell me what we should do if someone wants to uh you know actually jump in and give suggestions i totally would rather do that but if not i will putter around if we start leaning in one direction over the other then we'll lean harder in that direction so our options right now are to move to one of these two three unexplored areas or we can go right into where we are now does anyone have a preference All right, doesn't look like there's a preference. So I think we'll stay where we are so we don't have to come back here. We'll see if we can recruit this blacksmith or maybe the baker. We'll check it out. Let's check out the blacksmith. So it says set up the blacksmith trade stack. I did do a little bit of prep here. So it'll tell you what items to. Uh, to put out he's got a hatchet for a, a dollar he's got some lock picks and he also has a couple of swords and they all cost what they say up in the top right hand corner and we have a dollar so we could buy one of these the sword is in a strength test we don't roll any dice except we get a 10 but we have to discard it and both of them are the same lock picks will help us increase our dexterity and the hatchet will give us two successes and a strength test so we put these off to the side and if we ever want to buy them we can and then these are the four different options that we have to do with the blacksmith we can trade with him we can offer to help him with his work we can give them something to heal his son which i forgot to read we'll read that in a second or we can ask the blacksmith about an item so you simply let's just we'll test that out in a second so his hammer strikes sound uneven and the blacksmith seems un seems distracted you notice his eldest son usually helping him with his work is nowhere to be seen when asked he confides his son has fallen ill and with no food or medicine he's only getting worse and so at the moment i don't think we have anything that can help his son we can offer to help him we can give him something to, you know we cannot do that we can ask him about an item so we'll do that just so i can show you how the system works so you can simply you put the item in wait you know five years for it to focus and it you know has to be painful there we go it says many distressed souls find solace in prayer so that's what he has to say about our rosary and then as you can see that i that uh option is no longer available so let's we will do we can do a strength test our strength is not the greatest as you can see we have to get at least six to get one success or we can go to trade and we can buy that axe oh the, the plus two successes in a strength test is you have to discard it it's not every time the strength test i don't know if it's worth using that immediately same thing with our rosary we have to discard it in order to get the plus two successes all right well let's just see what we get here so like i said whenever you try a test we roll always roll these two dice and we'll throw in our one purple dice as well so we'll see what we get so we rolled a total of seven so we look on our little chart here seven gives us one success simply punch in one hit confirm it's hard work helping the blacksmith and lacking proper skills you do more harm than good he appreciates the effort and gives you some hints for the future we get to increase two of our strength stats 
So what that means is that we slide these discs down. And I think we should bring the two lowest ones down just so we can start getting some successes. And then, like I said, the white ones always go back and the purple one is exhausted. The trade, I believe it'll just And like I said, yeah, so if you trade with him, it lets you buy stuff from his stack. There's nothing there, nothing to heal, so we can just end our turn. So day two, we get to refresh a purple die. And I think we should go to the bakery and see if we can buy some red for the blacksmith's son for food. How does that sound? And of course it costs two. Because we have one. Awesome. The supplies are few, but they're still enough for the baker and his family to thrive. They greet you with friendly smiles, but as you hear what they have to offer, you notice the prices are a little inflated. So we can get number seven. So you can fish out card seven, and I can almost guarantee it will be bread. Right. Food, refresh up to two purple dice. All right, we'll put that over here as what the baker will offer later. We are a nun. We will not, we will not steal. We will not sin. And I don't think we have, I don't think the, the baker is going to care about our rosary, but we might as well. I don't think there's going to be anything against asking, and we'll see if we can perfect this scanning process. We are not, we are not, in fact, Oh, I, this was working before without problem. There we go. Yes, we understand that. Blacksmith told us the same thing. Anyone else think we should steal the bread? If we get someone else that says steal the bread, I will choose it. Otherwise, it will be a vote of one to one. Three, two, one. All right. Oh, Necro Daddy, why? Why? Why do you have to be like that? Now we have to do a dex stat. And we're not very dexterous as a nun. It's, uh, although maybe, you know, healing the, the blacksmith's son is very important as well. Say we use the purple dye as well, and we'll see if we can get some successes here. We need to get at least seven to get two. All right, so that's not bad at all. Eight, so eight on our decks is like I said, two successes. He guards his wares like a dragon on his hoard. You're unable to find an opportunity. So now we are gonna be morally broken with no benefit. All right, we will end our turn there and we get to refresh a purple die. All right, so, so we said, so we head out to an orchard down into the city center or out into a pool. Does anyone have a preference? Kleptonun to the rescue. I know we have all these folds that we could have hidden stuff in. You'd think it would be easier. But I think it's because we're so new at it. We're just not, you know, we haven't got the, the skills to pay the bread bills. City center, they say. All right. Explore 65. We flip it over. And here we are. 
Most of the folk live here. Many are cowering in their homes now, unsure of the future. There is the old widow. There is the inn. The inn seems closed, but you see a light inside. And 43. Covenant's bell tower can be seen from afar. So at least we know where the convent is. Thirty nine, you see a large barn standing over on the shorn field. Thirty nine. Oh, we'll have to move our nun down here. There she is. She's now in the city center. Oh, we have something to the south. We'll have to make a little bit of room here. Number one. Number one is the southern part of the town. It is less frequented. All right, so we have two options. We can go see the old widow or we can go to the inn. Input your options now if you wish. All right, we are going to go see old widow. The rats living in the widow's cellar could clearly be a problem if left unchecked. She agrees to let you in. At, she agrees to let you in after you promise to get rid of them. I'm in no state to leave the house anymore, she says, but I'll reward you with a coin and a story. You notice an unguarded sack of grain clearly visible in the open doorway of a poorer house nearby. We can destroy the nest with a strength stat, which ours is terrible. We can examine the unguarded supplies. We can ask her about our quest, which we, as you can see, we have, like I said, we have the, the purple and the beige quest. So we'd like ask her about one half or the other. So either about the ritualistic items or, or getting followers. Or we can ask her about an item of which we have our rosary. I say we end up with just, let's examine these unguarded supplies. There's unguarded sack of grain sitting behind an open door. Take the grain or shut the door. Well, I feel that my... Uh... Yeah. I knew you'd say that. It seems that we're going to be not such a not such a law-abiding nun. I'm getting flashes on my screen. Is everyone getting that? Hopefully it's just me. That's right. Who is going to stop Klepto Nun? No one. It was important. If it was important, yeah, see, see the game knows, right? The game knows. If it was important, it would have been locked up. You know, if it was someone's grain, then they would have had, they would have had a sign on it. Like the little name written on it. Do not touch, uh, do not touch, you know, this is Joe's grain. There was no sign. So obviously they wanted us to have it. So we get number seven, which is the same as the, the other one. There are multiples of some cards, so it's not as though this is unique grain unique food so it wasn't actually grain it was a fish and we can have up to five items all right so there we are 
Although, that being said, didn't I just say that there was multiples of cards? So maybe there is multiple sevens and there's one that is actually green. Let's take a look. Instead of me being a smart ass. No, see, that's what I get for thinking that they were, they were all fish. Thank you for wasting my time, game. So yeah, so this is a stack of uh, item cards. That is this thick, and they're numbered 76 to one. And like I said, there are multiples of some. So there's over 150 cards here. So I apologize when I go looking for certain cards. All right, we have our grain. Let's ask her about our quest. And since we're in the town, let's ask her about... Good morning, Jose. Yes, I'm hoping that the flashing will slow down. We will see. If not, I will do something to try to fix it. All right, let's ask her about the following followers part of our quest. Because I think that is what she'll have the most information about. Let's just try holding it there and see if it focuses. No. Actually, we're gonna have to cover up the other one. Visiting both the healer and the witch should help your progress. You'll find them in the western part of the valley. There you go, she had information. How useful. All right. That is still flashing. What is that? You know what? I'm going to turn that off and see if that stops it. No, it's not. Hmm. What if I turn off second overhead? Will that stop it? No. Well, I've turned off both overlays that are over that part of the screen, so I have no idea what is causing it. I'll work on it later. All right, so here we are. Shall we destroy the nest? Or shall we wait until our strength is better to try? I'm sure they'll let us come back. Let's give it a whirl. Destroy the nest. Do we have a method? Interesting. Should we scan the grain? Maybe we can lure them together with the grain and then get them all at once. I say we try it. This is aggravating, only because it works so well. This will not help you. The widow looks at you doubtfully, seemingly reconsider whether she was right to let you in. Oh, good. So it was a terrible idea. Terrible idea. And now it's gone. Now we will end our turn. I apologize. It was a terrible idea. Well, at least now we're up to two purple dice. Now, shall we move again, or shall we check out the inn? I'm interested to see if there's a way to get those rats. Yeah, she's a hip nun. She's, she's, uh, she's got sticky finger, the sticky finger klepto nun. Let's check out the inn. Does anyone, uh, yeah. let's, let's case the inn. 
guys are terrible. All right. As you approach the inn, the delicious aromas from within keep and incur seem encourages with disaster all around you. In incongruous with the disaster all around you. You knock, and the innkeeper reluctantly lets you in. What do you want? He asks nervously, standing between you and a large board of supplies. Did that useless carpenter send you? He still owes me money. Pay the carpenter's debt of four. Well, we know that's not happening. Buy a meal for two dollars. Well, ah, we have not that much money. We can ask him about an item, or we can ask him about one of our destinies. So this looks like, unfortunately, it was a wasted trip. Let's see if he has any information about the other part of our destiny, the relics. this thing I apologize for this everyone I did have this working really well yesterday although the lighting was slightly different like they're getting this many cameras to work was a pain I wonder if I use this together There we go. Covenant Garden, Convent Garden could really use something to help with the rats. So he wants us to go towards the convent as well. No, I, I played, I played the intro mission, but like I said, I played it by myself, not with, you know, like seven different cameras. Uh, going at the same time so it only asked for one which was this front one and it was it was it was scanning the cards quite easily but i did have all the cameras set up scanning them over there and uh it was working easier yesterday but that's that I, does anyone we have i don't think we have anything else for this this in let's end our turn and we're up to our full complement of three purple dice so we could it's possible for us to roll a 10 on five dice or even more and we could get three successes in the old widow's house to catch those rats I don't know. What do people think? Try the rats again or move towards the, the convent or move somewhere else? Does anyone have a thing? Yeah, the, the camera, all the cameras came together all at once. Once I figured out I needed a USB controller, the particular motherboard I had sort of had them all on the same range and a computer can only take uh, two. So I needed to get a separate card so I could have separate USBs. Anyway enough of the tech stuff now the problem is just lighting all right i hate going back so i am going to try since no one oh wait there's a vote to move forward all right so let's go south again i say let's go to this number one and we'll see what is down here Okay, now we got to figure out what this flashing thing's all about. Anyway. The calm part of town, sitting comfortably by the river. Isn't that nice? Let's do some fishing, why don't we? We have the carpenter's workshop, who owes money to the innkeeper. And we have the shrine to the fallen. A shrine honoring the fallen has seen better days, but it's still recognizable. And we'll move our nun down. Oh, we forgot to flip it over. Mm -hmm. 
Divinus look appealing after this? Is Divinus a game? So I'm not, not totally on board with that at the moment. Don't remember it. And we have the water wheel slowly turns by the river. We have 47 off to the east. Yes, maybe we can find something in the carpenter's workshop to steal. You're right. And over here we have a stone circle towers above a broken bridge. Number 19. All right. So we have a vote for going and stealing. Ah, so it's another lucky duck app driven game. Well, I don't know. I'm, we'll I'm going to talk about it once we're done about what I think of everything so far, but we'll see. I don't want to go into it now. We'll wait because I want a little more experience in this, this finishing this game out. Well, I think solidify a couple things. All right. So we said we're going to go steal from the carpenter. Let's see what the carpenter has to say. Oh, we have to set up his deck. So give me a moment. He's got a rope. This one I don't have ready. I just was lucky enough to have a stack. So that's 17. We need five and 15. Five. What is five? Five is another hatchet. 15. I think it's just another sword, but we'll see. Ah, 15 is a torch. So he has these three items to buy. Everyone has stuff for us to buy and everyone wants money. Hatchet, one time use in a strength test for two more successes. Rope one-time use in a dexterity test for uh, two successes and a torch one success in each test this turn now so these you don't so i was always said that you would have to discard them after you use them but that's not always the case like we saw with the rats earlier man i it's just not looking like it used to. I'm wondering just because it's a different time of day and the lightning. Anyway, I digress. Moving on. So like with the rats, it said, do you have a plan? So you can scan an item, and just because you have it, it will help you, and you don't have to discard it. Or you can use it for its use, like I said, and then you will have to discard it. The line shines, the line shines through the window, but the door is locked and barred. As you knock on the carpenter's door, you hear a voice from inside. Did you come for my debt? Oh, can we be like the, the nun enforcer? Yes, we've come here to break your legs. Um, no, uh, you hear, did you come here for my debt? No, I don't have any money for the innkeeper be gone. We can offer to pay his debt. I don't think that's the kind of nun. We're not that kind of nun. Um, or we can ask him about an item. Our crucifix or our grain. I don't think that's... I don't think any of that is helpful. Use the torch to burn out the rats in someone's basement. I see. I think I like where you're going. I think we're going to go with the, the 40k uh, cleansing fire klepto nun uh, angle 100%. I, I'm 100% on board with you right now. So we're going to spend our coin. We are totally going to buy the torch. And we are all set. Anyone have anything else they want to try here? 
we will end our turn. Refresh a die. We have all of our dice. I think we should go see the shrine just because we're here. And then we'll move back to the old widow next turn. A long time ago, a simple shrine was built on the riverbank to commemorate the battles that took place here in ages past. Villagers often pray here for the souls of the deceased. A strange feeling of sadness hangs in the air. We can purify a ritual artifact of the shrine, of which we don't have any. We can break into the shrine, or we can investigate the shrine. Now, before everyone types in to break in, I will just look at it first. Of course, there is a steal option. Many met their final fate in the old wars. Folks sometimes leave offerings for the dead here. Do we steal the offering or do we pay our respects? All right, let us stay on point, shall we? It's, it's see, the game is just wording, word, it's the wording here, right? We're not actually stealing the offering. We are using it to the offering's benefit. You see, if there is no one to pray at the shrine, then it will not get more offerings. It's sort of like an investment. We're investing the money for the shrine. Ah, we get a sword. Interesting. And I believe the sword is the one where we just get a strength up 10 on a strength test. I think we should use that at our earliest convenience just because we're getting to our, uh, our item limit. And that was a problem in my last game where I just had too many items and I should have just used them when I could. But uh, we'll see. Uh, now we can still break into the shrine. Click. We can do a straight uh, strength test or we can pry, I say we pry the door open with the sword. Since we just got it, I'm sure it's going to work. It's going to be great. It's like a mini game. Can you focus the camera, sir? Oh, my God. Can you just scan the card, please? All right, I need to figure out something that works better. Let's see if I can use the rule book here. Now I've completely lost the camera. Awesome. One more time. I think I might just have to restart it. So as you can see, there's this one problem with this game.
so true. It's what I get for... See, this is what happens when you try new things. You see, object of the game is never try new things. All right, let's see here. Feast of Famine, play. Resume last game. Hooray! See, that wasn't terrible. This is terrible. This will not help you open the door. See, there we go. That wasn't terrible. All right. Maybe that will work. All right. Just doing that because that's what we did already. All right, let us end our turn and not burn the widow's house down. We can try not to burn the widow's house down. So when we move, we can do, move two spaces. So we're going to move back up here to the city center. Click on the old widow. Yes, we would like to visit her. We are going to destroy the nest with a method. We have a method. We have this torch. Only going to work. Not kill anyone but rats. Guarantee it. Oh, game. Why do you vex me so? How much closer do you want it? All right. Hooray. The rats. Nest is gone. That is for sure. So is the house. Consumed by flames. The widow <laughs> wailing curses echoes in your ears. For long after some townsfolk drag her away from you. Discard the torch. Gain an XP. All right, so we haven't talked about XP. This is one thing I'm not completely understanding. Maybe it's just something you just want to wait for. This is the XP token. What you get to do with the XP token is increase two of your stats. Move two tokens. I'm just not understanding why you wouldn't always use it immediately why do we need tokens maybe you want to wait and see if there's like one big thing you want to do later but anyway let's use it immediately yes we're going to have a very long resume by the time this is done a little bit of uh stealing a little bit of arson a little bit of praying it's all good it's all good we're doing the work Let's make our board nice and straight by increasing our dexterity and our strength. I like the way this looks. I like the way things are going. All is good. The torch is discarded. Keep the sword in case the widow comes back. That ended our turn. All right. Why is the old widow still there? Usually, it disappears when you're done with it. And if we click on it, that will be our turn. And there is some time stuff, even though we're not on the other thing. Let's just see what else 
she has to say. A small pagan shrine stands untouched by the flames. Apart from that, only ash remains. Interesting. Contemplate the ruin. Some sacrifices are necessary. Your resolve is strengthened. Refresh one of your purple die, dice, of which we have all of them. Okay. Interesting. So we know there's a spot here that will let us refresh our dice. Nothing to do in the inn because now we have zero money. What are people thinking? Shall we start heading towards the convent? Shall we go out to the farmhouse that's over here? Where shall we go? There are many buildings to burn. I mean, to purify. Convent, we've been told. All right, I believe we know the bell tower's here. So let's move out in this direction. 43. Yes, we wish to go see the bell tower. And here we are. Isn't that lovely? Nice little grove. Convent high tower towers were a sign of hope for many. But is there still hope left? Well, if we're not lighting the beacon for hope, I don't know who is. <laughs> All right. There is the garden that we can check out. The garden is left oddly untouched by the vermin. Well, because they know the fire. The bishop has been praying in the chapel since the rats came. And so, the, just so you know, the miniatures are much like the points of interest. You click on them, but you've seen that already. But just so you know, inhuman laughter resounds in the bell tower. I'm sure they're just having fun. All right. And we see 28 out in the distance here. Tall tree stands amid the farmland. 28. All right, so here we are. We can talk to the bishop. We can go into the garden or we can check out the inhuman laughter coming from the bell tower what shall we do i agree they look like they're having fun over here the thrill of burning a house down has passed we need to ramp up the adrenaline let's see what's in the bell tower you approach the bell tower Somewhere from above, malevolent laughter reaches you, and a thrown bottle soon follows. Miraculously, you catch it. It's mostly still full. We gain alcohol, item number 13. This will help the blacksmith's son, right? Oh, what is the nun card doing over here? All right, alcohol, item number four. The bell tower door is solid wood, bound in iron. It's also locked. Another bout of high-pitched laughter bursts from the top of the tower as you see several rats watching you with great attention. We can do a strength test to open the door. Why not? Ah, we had lock picks we could have bought from the blacksmith for a dollar. We 
yoke. So we have to get our stealing better. All right. Our only option is to force it open. For I don't think any of these will work. Shall we use the sword and hack it open to go right to a 10, which will give us three successes? Or should we just roll all of our dice and see what we get? Well, we have purple, so let's just roll them all since we have so many. Uh, let's keep one just in case. Once we get up there, there might be more options. All right, four, five, six, seven. Eight is our total. Eight gives us two successes. You quickly make your way in. All around the bell tower, rats watch as you climb. So these go exhausted. These are back in our pool. As you climb the steep steps to the top of the tower, numerous rats skitter up and down. The burning stench of sulfur permeates the air. Welcome, shrieks a small but vicious looking devil sitting by the bell. Welcome to my castle. Rats surround it. Their eyes are set firmly upon its horn visage. Visage. All right. This escalated super fast. So we're at the top of the bell tower. There is a devil. There are rats. We must confront the devil. We can scare it off with knowledge, or we can fight it using an item. I say it is time to put the sword to the test. What do other people think? Fight it with a cross? Yeah, I suppose. Yeah, all right. Let's try that. All right, Rosary. What have you got for us here? The devil shrieks, unable to bear the presence of a power greater than its own. It leaps out of the tower, head first. You find its broken body below. Discard the rosary. All right. So much for our rosary. That's fine, though. All right. You take the devil's claw as a trophy. Gain the bloody trophy, card number two. So this is going towards our, our ritual. So this will be if you have if you have a strength out of one, you can get two experience, which means bringing one of these tokens all the way down <clears throat> to one, and then you can trade it in and get two more experience. One of those, if you're winning, you're winning more mechanisms, which we all know we love. Oh, I almost forgot. Look at that. There was a benefit there I almost didn't take. We also get to increase our knowledge by one. Um, let's start bringing one of these high ones down. All right. As you climb the steep stairs. Oh, we did that. What, 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 what? All right. We did all that. Kill the demon. Good work, everyone. Ending our turn. Yes. The bell tower is quiet once again. I'm not sure what that means. The bell tower. Or is quiet. Okay. Like I said, there you go. Once you've exhausted it, it's the first time we've been able to take something off. So that's somewhat of a victory. Remove the bell tower. All right. Done. Refresh a die. Will do. All right. Shall we stay here or move on? Agree. Let's tip it up with the bishop. We're going to visit the chapel. The bishop, safe in his refuge, 
in the chapel pauses his prayers as you enter. What can I help you with, he asks, and his voice is shaking only a little. Well, you know, because we've got a torch. Uh, a few scared novices hide in a corner as well they should. All right. I don't like any of these things, except for purify a ritual artifact in the chapel. But we'll do that, I think, at the end. Let us tip it up with the bishop. James 1, 2 to 3. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters. Whenever you face trials of many kinds, it is because you know the testing of your faith produces preference, perseverance, and fire. Gain the rosary back. It's not that I added fire. It's it's our nun character. She adds fire. She it's it's her problem. It's not mine. All right. Since we're up to our five item maximum, I will suggest that we purify that bloody trophy so we will have a spot in our inventory. Let let's see how this works. Pur pur purify a ritual artifact at the chapel. And so begins the mini game. Although this seems to be working a little bit better. Let's see. Is that not a ritual artifact? The charm. Oh! I think I might have got mixed up with another game. With my other game, I thought they were the. So did I get the right item? Yeah. All right. Never mind. Let's take a moment to meditate. Your sins feel like a burden in this place of worship. Why did you come here, sinner? Because I'm low on matches. I mean. Thank you for the purple die. And let's ask the bishop about purifying a thing. I'm, I'm liking going in that direction as opposed to getting people to help us because uh, a lot of people don't like us already. So it is the purple one. Oh, game. How what do I hate thee? We will get this fixed up, folks. I promise on the next one, I'll make sure it's not so. Go to the Blooming Grove in the northeastern part of the valley. Well, we're already in the eastern part, so I guess we're going to be heading north then. So let's end our turn. Was it exhaust? Thank you for that. We don't gain one, we lost one. Thank you for that. It's just that so many of them said uh, unexhaust, I got carried away. But we're gonna get back one right now anyway. Refresh an effort die. Now the question is, do we wanna to go to the garden before we leave? I think we should check it out just to see what's there. The bishop said we need to pray and have faith, confesses the gardener. But what faith can I have if I'm doing nothing? I saw the first rats sneak into the garden through a hole in the wall. If only I had a way to get rid of them. Some distance away, you notice a stray dog watching you closely. Give her the means. So we have alcohol. It burns. So we just need something to ignite the alcohol and burn the rats. A 
suppose we can catch the dog. Let's try that. It is right now our stats are all relatively the same. Let's try that. Lure it in. I'm wondering if the game knows its grain or does it just think it's food? I really don't want to lose our food. How fast do you think our nun is? I think she's going to have to get uh, some sprinting skills. So let's just try to chase it down. It's like like you said, they're going to try to catch up to us, so. All right, let's roll them all. I think this is all we're going to have to do this round. Four, seven, nine, ten. Ten on decks. We're one away. Still is two successes. It seems frightened. Animals can be very agile. You spend hours fruitlessly chasing the dog. Luckily, no one is watching. <laughs> Although, I, I can see where that would be true. It might be fun watching a nun running around trying to catch a dog. I say we spend that experience immediately. And let's bring our decks down by one. And I think we should bring our strength down. We'll see how that goes. If anyone can think of a reason why you would save experience points, I'd like to know. Give her the means to protect the garden from rats. I cannot think of anything. Let us end our turn and go north. Oh, I forgot to move. Yeah, it's one XP, and XP lets you move two counters down by one. Or the same counter down two. Let me just take a quick... Let's say I'll, I'll look at it later, but it should be. I can find out where it is. Yep. Yeah. Never have two skill markers in the same place. XP lets you move two of them. Refresh a die. Let's head north. North to 40. We will be in the orchard. With the harvest done, only wind visits the orchard. Abandoned orchard. It didn't change the thing. It didn't tell me who this gentleman is, but there he is. Place Abandoned Orchard as indicated. Maybe that's his name. Mr. Abandoned Orchard. Maybe his parents didn't like him. A swarm of rats is ravaging the area, devouring everything in their path. Well. Place Rat Swarm as indicated. Done. No, that's the one thing it says you cannot do. You cannot spend them during the test. It's only... Yeah, no, 
It's only a journey. Anyway, I'll look into it more later. Maybe there's something in online or something. We will get through this. All right, here we are with the rat swarm. They're on. We have 17 that's over here. Few venture into these woods. Some say they are haunted. That's also true, yes. Although in the in the pregame, the most of the times you would do a test and either you'd fail or succeed and it would say you lose stats. A lot of them, because you can even lose stats, so a lot of them says, well, you lose this stat but gain an XP. So it was always, well, I'm going to spend it immediately and not lose that stat and, and gain something instead. But so then maybe I'm just biased because of that. All right, here we are. Shall we engage with the rat swarm? Talk to the orchard keeper? Or do nothing? We have no fire. Oh, the alcohol in a knowledge test, you get an instant 10, which makes no sense, but sure. True. I say we, we check out with the rats and see what to say, or what our options are with the rats. Visit the rat swarm? Sure. Let's bring a cake. The swarm of rats is led by a devil. The beast itself is rat-like, but if it's it's a much but it's a much larger size. Didn't give it away. Its horns and red fur certainly do. You must act quickly. Those rats are ravenous, and they have no qualms about eating human flesh. Either we do a strength test of some kind with an item, or we run away with a dexterity check. Hit them with the sword. I'm not sure how swords and rat swarms will work. We are about to find out. We have equipment. What does the sword say? Sword, save us. Wonder if it's having problems because of the orientation of the code. came armed and quickly cut your way towards the devil. Gain two money and an XP. She cleared, she, she's she been places. She, she knows things. Stuff happened. And uh, I think it's witness protection. And anyway, we shall see. So, Two money. And an XP, which I think we'll just keep on point and spend it. Well, no, whatever. whatever. Well, let's, let's just test this out. We'll take it as a, as a token. Why not? You face the swarm's leader now. The devil shrieks and tries to retreat back into its swarm. You must act quickly. Those rats are ravenous. They have no qualms about eating human flesh. So we can strike down the demon. It didn't say discard the sword. So I say we don't back down now. Let's strike it down. And I say we use the sword now. Any objections? In a strength test, don't roll any dice. Instead, you roll a 10. And a 10 will give us three successes. Win 
in this case, we definitely have to throw away the sword. The devil is defeated, and you smash your way out of the swarm, bloodied but triumphant. Despite the rats watching you hungrily, you take time to remove its horn as a trophy. This was a worthy victory. Gain Devil's Horn 48. Here we go. This is also just a charm. It is not a ritual item either. Always on on turn start we can lose two stats to gain a gold that's not happening anytime soon as a terrible item that we should sell for two gold at our soonest opportunity we also gain another xp this one i think we will just spend and make it easy we'll bring our dexterity down by one to keep it into line and we just seem to be getting strength tests all the time so let's bring this down by one yes we could build we have a claw and a horn true we could do sort of like a uh, squish mellow or a Cabbage Patch Kid Demon. That would be fun. Little Build-A-Bear project. I love it. All right. Turn ends. Is nothing sacred? A voracious swarm of rats floods the chapel. The bishop tries to fend off the rodents, but they are unaffected by the holy powers of his pastoral staff. Barely human screams abrupt abruptly chain, change to the sounds of flesh being devoured. Remove the bishop. I'm sure he's fine. He just got really scared. Maybe we'll have to go down and see what happened uh, later. Refresh an effort die. The rat swarm, now leaderless, is on the move. The bakery is overrun. Interesting. Interesting. Maybe killing the leader of the rats wasn't a great idea. But, um... Oh, he doesn't have to worry about... Oh, no, that was the bakery. Oh, Okay, so much for helping the baker's son. Okay. Everything's good. Move the swarm over there. Will do. Ominous lights dance in the empty windows as strange laughter resounds over the grounds. Something has changed in the ruins. Whoa. No one came to claim the noble abode when its master died. Some say it's cursed. Place tile 18 face up as indicated. I don't even think I, I don't even have that. I don't even have that one ready. Give me a moment. Eighteen. It goes beside twenty eight here. All right. Room is at a, at, a, at a maximum here. All right, so here we are. Some craziness going on. Rat Palace. Well, that sounds like a fun place. 
ominous lights dance in the empty windows of a st oh no that's the same it didn't change never mind never mind what is that a laughing singing demon surrounded by an aura of dark power jumps and dances in the old garden whenever he goes a swarm of rats follows place the rat king as indicated so just so people can see what we have to deal with here this is all of the this is what the box looks like so we have to go looking for a figure and they're all just little tiny things where are you rat king there you are all right then we have our rat king Okay, so quick recap. We burnt down the widow's house and we went to the convent and broke into the bell tower and killed a demon and then left the bishop to be eaten by rats. And then we went north where we killed the leader of a rat swarm only to let the swarm go wild and ravage throughout the village good work good work good work doing doing the lord's work so here we are in the abandoned orchard and we have yet to talk to this gentleman so let's see what he has to say let us visit the abandoned orchard most of the fruit has been picked already and what's left is now food for the rats the old storyteller is resting in a peaceful corner under a tree. You recall his stories of strange tools used in ancient rituals. Perhaps he could share a tale with you. Select rotten fruit for a toxic brew. What kind of nun is this? Jeez. And, uh, ask the tell storyteller for a story. Ask the storyteller about your destiny. Ask the storyteller about an item. Let him share his wisdom. Three dollars. Gain an extra skill. Um, we do not have three dollars. Let's ask him for a story and we can use the alcohol maybe for a bonus. Let's offer him the alcohol. I think that would be good. Yes. Focus your damn camera. What am I supposed to do with this? I won't tell you anything as long as I'm hungry. There's something unsettling and animalistic in his expression. As he speaks his last word, you quickly say your goodbyes. Well, he's obviously not very nice. Let's try making a toxic brew. We've got some dice. We might as well use them. Right, we didn't cover what that meant. This means an automatic success, and we rolled terribly. One success. The rotting fruit smells disgusting, but you fail to make anything useful from it. Whatever makes the difference between poison and stinky mush, you fail to see it for now. So this is what I was talking about before, where we're going to lose a stat, but we gain an XP. So since it's two difference, we can just say we're not going to lose it and we gain one of something else instead. So we'll just gain the knowledge. And I think we'll spend this XP while we're here to bring our stats into line. And one somewhere else, we'll bring start bringing this dex down. There we are.
All right. That is that. Let's see if he has anything to say about collecting the ritual. Please, game, just be. <laughs> oh, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Just focus, damn you. Technology! All right. Don't care what he has to say anyway. <laughs> All right. We will end our day there. The townsfolk have begun in a dreamlike state to gather among the rotting remains of the feast. And that's where the rat swarm is as well. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. The feast of famine. This is just not going well at all. In many ways. All right. Where shall we go next? Check out the Rat King. So we'll start moving further east. Shall we go back and check out what's going on with the Rat Swarm? We have some money now. We could buy some items from the blacksmith. Maybe sell some of these other things. Time to leave town. Agreed. I think it's a write-off. Well, I say let's head east. Because there's a bunch of stuff out here and I don't want to have to double back a bunch of times. Refresh a die. The rat swarm is on the move. The inn is under attack. The innkeeper was seen running away. Well, that's a good thing because he was a jerk. The rats leave nothing of the inn and its inhabitants. Remove the inn. Done. Move the rat swarm. Done. Maybe we should chase the rat swarm down. There's going to be nothing left if we don't. <laughs> it's like, excellent. <laughs> oh, I'm not sure what to do now. What do we have? What can we do about the rat swarm? We've got nothing. Um... Let's see. I say I say we get towards this rat king and see what happens. 28. The road leading to the fields to the old sorry, the road leading to fields fields the old estate has fallen into disuse. The fields themselves lie abandoned to the vermin. Prosperous farmer, farmer's home, angrily voices a resound from inside. All right, so we have grumpy farmer. Prosperous farmer's home, angry voices resound from inside. All right. We have an infested cart. Something dark has claimed this overturned cart. And the sacred tree. All sorts of stuff to check out here. And of course we get to pick one.
Anyone want to jump in? I'm leaning towards the sacred tree because we need some purple dice. Maybe it will let us. The lone tree overlooks this part of the valley. Some still have sacrifices. Some still leave sacrifices underneath in harvest time. It's mostly offerings of grain, but there is a small box where towns will gleep coins for luck. As you approach the tree, you notice a large flower blooming on the otherwise dead giant a few meters above your head. It gleams with unnatural light. Well, you know what our nun would do. She would just check out, uh, yeah, put a dollar in the box or steal some. What's as we said, it's not stealing, it's investing for the tree. The food offerings left behind have started to spoil, but among them, you also find a few coins left for good luck during the harvest celebrations. They'll certainly be of use to you. Gain two more coins. There we go. So, profits have started racking up for our nun. She's now four coins in. I'm sure we'll reinvest those for the tree sometime down the road. Shall we climb the tree? Do we have anything to help us to climb the tree? We do not. It's probably looking for a rope, which someone had. It was... The carpenter had some rope. It's just straight up an item. So I'm not even going to bother clicking on it. It's not even a skill. So we're going to end our turn. Refresh and effort die. All right. Shall we find out what the Rat King wants? Or shall we check out some of these other places here? Or should we go get... Shall we go get the rope? The rope would be two turns away. We could go back to where the rats are now and see what it asks for. That was the sacred tree of what we just did. The sacred tree got us the flower and the coins. Rats. All right, let's go see the rats. You must act quickly. Those rats are ravenous, and they have no qualms about eating human flesh. Save what remains, or run away. Our dexterity is not terrible, and we do have four dice to roll. Let's try to save it. All right, two dice and two purple. We need to get, hopefully, eight. We got a lot. Nine. And 11 on dexterity brings us right up to four successes. So if that's not successful, I don't know what is. Four successes. The rats devour everything, but still manage to salvage something before being forced to run. Gain rope 17. Well, if that isn't exactly what we wanted, I don't know what is. Unfortunately, we have too many items now. So we have to discard something. And they do have a system where we can always go back and get it. We have enough money, so I think our best bet is to ditch the devil's horn. Because I'm not losing stats to get money. So what we do is we have these tokens here. And you put one on the map where you dropped it. And then one on the item. So if we ever need it, we can go back and get it. And we get an XP. Interesting. So we can't move. Should we bring our dexterity and our knowledge into play? Why don't we do that? Let's bring these down. We'll bring our strength. Let's bring these down. One each. 
There's our XP. Now we must flee. We have no choice but to flee. All right. Interesting. Running away. Five gets us one success. This is probably going to be bad. We have no items. Oh, wait. No, we're not going to do that. We're not wasting the rope. We want it to get that flower just to see what that's all about. All right. We're going to go with one. You turn and run, but some of the rodents catch up to you before you manage to get away. You receive some nasty bites. Gain one XP. Okay. We'll save that for now, I guess. It seemed nothing but beneficial. Your turn ends. Refresh an effort done. Done. End of turn. Yes. Refresh an effort done. Done. Yes, apparently. All right, so it's a new turn. We have our rope. I say we go to our sacred tree. It's two moves away. We'll see what this flower is all about. Sacred tree. Climb the tree with our rope. Let's go mini game. Will it scan for us, please? Just, just. Throw the rope over a branch above the flower. Climbing the tree is easy now. You reach the flower, pick it. You feel a strange, invigorating power. Why did it choose this time to bloom? Is this a sign? Discard the rope. Gain magic flower 54. All right, 54. This is a ritual item. So we finally have a ritual item. For each knowledge test, you may refresh one. And this is always. So this is extra amazing. All right. Magic flower goes into the inventory. We get to refresh a die every time we do a knowledge test. Well worth the effort. We steal money again? Really? Well, we're here. Okay, so we weren't very thorough last time. And, you know, it's all about making sure you do a good job. Okay, so another coin. We only want what's best for the tree. We will end our turn. Yes. Refresh a die. All right, so now I do need some input because we're sort of at... Okay, the rat swarm didn't move. So that's good. What do we want to do now? We're here at the sacred tree. We haven't looked at the farmhouse or an infested cart. We can go see what the Rat King wants. Maybe he just wants to be friends. Maybe he's just a misunderstood Rat King. What do people think? Final showdown. Klepto Nun versus Rat King. Any input? All right. Drinks 
with the Rat King. Let's do it. Visit the Rat King. Yes. The demon pauses its frolicking, frolicking and turns towards you. It's easily twice your size, and you can't help but notice that the rats following it now surround you in a tight circle. It grins at you, showing a frightening number of sharp teeth. Hello, hello, my honored guest. Do you enjoy God's little test? You realize you can't move. A living carpet of rats surrounds your feet, binding you in place. So, we can ask about the God's test. We can ask the demon about itself. Like, how is it feeling today? Uh, or we can feed it. Let's do these easy ones first here and see what happens. Oh, kindred spirit. I can see, do tell me how it came to be. On that one so wicked of soul, will for the good of many toll. The beast watches you very attentively. Its eyes are pits of darkness. Take heed and witness, mortal thing, for God above gave rats their king, and now his test I must perform to break the earth and its new form. You seek, you may seek methods to resist, but know this. It pauses, enjoying your anticipation. With famine's feast was end's end released. It's retinue of rats parts before you and lets you leave its words half understood weigh heavily gain one xp well let's just spend that xp and start bringing these down let's do strength and dexterity is that going to end our turn no. All right. Good. So we give him some food or a knowledge test. True. Let's give him the alcohol. Scan the card. It accepts your gift, taking it almost gently with its clawed, clawed hand. Then, with all pretense of subtly gone, it devours your gift in one gulp. You find yourself holding a handful of gold and feeling your soul somewhat stained. Discard the alcohol. Gain two gold. Well, I think our work here is done. We've plundered the town. Uh, done the demon's work, have been paid handsomely for it, and I'm sure our soul is clean. Yikes. Let us ask the demon about itself. I'm surprised that, you know, giving all these other benefits, we didn't winning. Exactly. I agree. I don't think the game is going to agree. Ask the demon about itself. Before each knowledge test, we gain a purple die. And as we saw before, we have a break. You can see behind there, we do have a break free test coming in strength. So I think we should save. Save a purple, save two purple dice. Let's save two purple dice. We'll roll three for this one. Six, seven, eight. Eight on knowledge is good. Right on it, that will be three successes. Let's go back. This is exhausted. Three successes. You ask the you ask the 
you ask. The beast gives you a toothy grin and responds. Strange tidings passing time shall bring. And I'm the only one the rats call king. Outside the realms of wrong and right, Lightbringer and his father Bright have sent me in this faithful hour, ensuring all shall be devoured. All right, another XP. Say we bring our strength down and try to get it to one. If we get our strength to one, then we get two XP. Let's just straight up bring it down two. And then we'll spend this other XP that we have sitting here to bring two more stats down. We'll bring our strength to one and we'll bring our other knowledge down by one. Then we will discard the bloody trophy. If you have a strength at one, gain two XP. We'll take one and use one. That gives us two movements with which we will bring this strength down by one and this dex down by one. How do you win this game? Well, I'd say at the beginning, I flipped the, the back of the nuns card over and it gave us two, two ways to win. So we either have to destroy two ritual artifacts of which we have one now, we have the magic flower or we need to recruit three followers. And as we only burn followers, um, that's not going to happen. So we are going to try to find a second ritual artifact. But that was a good turn. We got like four XP through all of the shenanigans. And now we have to do our break free and run. Even though, you know, we showed him a good, you know, we were all friend and happy, but no, apparently not. All right. We will use all the dice. Gives us a total of four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine on strength. That's three successes. You shake off both its dark influence and the rats. You tumble to the ground, and the horde of rats chases you as you run. Devilish laughter follows you. Your turn ends. Refresh an epic die. Will do. All right, that seemed to be everything at the Rat King. This is very far east, so I say we should check out everything that's here. Let's end our... Let's uh, go to the Rat Palace and see what's there. Agreed. Rat Palace it is. The garden is overrun with rats. A venerable army of rats blocks your entry to the mansion itself. Only the path to the chapel is somehow clear. So we do have a ritual item that says we can take to the chapel. So we can do that first. Or we can start at the top and visit the old chapel, which will immediately let us refresh a die. So let's try that. We refresh a die because we're about to do a knowledge test. And let's save one, just because. We'll see you later, Necro Daddy. Thank you for hanging out. And check in next time. We'll be doing the next story somewhat soon. So we have a total of seven successes on knowledge. We're just one short of eight. That is unfortunate. Seven, that gives us two successes. The old chapel is somehow still intact and free of rats. Once noble lords of the valley prayed here, now it stands forgotten. Somehow the preserved 
remains of the old place of worship fill you with determination. Refresh all of your purple dice. Will do. Let us take a ritual item to the old chapel, because we have one. Even though it's so good, I don't want to lose it. All right, maybe that's the key. Try that from now on. Hopefully I figured out how to get it to work quickly. All right, the pagan relic crumbles to dust. Damn it. Candles at the altar dim and fade as the shrine's power is spent. No more pagan items can be destroyed here. Discard the magic flower, 54. Gain an experience. Boo. The first pagan relic has been destroyed. You need one more. All right, well, at least we're on our way. And we gain an experience. Let's bring these two down into play a little bit further. Get them at nine. We still have an experience point here. Let's spend it now as well and just get it over with. And we will bring this down by one. And we will bring uh, strength down by one. All right. Here we go. Now, can we just end our turn and not fight our way through the garden? But our strength's pretty good. We only need seven, and we have all of our dice. We might get something interesting. Oh, but it wants an item. Ay, ay, ay. Let's try it. Let's see. Uh, Distract them with the grain. Sure. Oh, wait, wait. we can do might alone. Let's do might alone. We'll use two purple dice. So four and four is eight. That's three successes. You hack and slash and the rats come in waves, each more ferocious than the previous one. Finally, you are victorious. The remaining rats flee to their king. It, look, it looks at you from a distance and gives you a bow, utterly devoid of respect. You respond with the same and notice a simple talisman lying at your feet. You gain a strength, which is nice. And we gain talisman six. I wonder if this is another, no, it is a charm, not a ritual item. Talisman, we can get plus three successes in a test where we get zero successes. Well, that's probably not going to happen anytime soon, but you never know. Now we can search the mansion using dexterity. Why wouldn't we? We have a purple die left. We will use it. We want to get at least a seven. We did not. We got a five. Five on our decks is only one success. Unfortunate. As soon as you step inside, the rotten floor breaks beneath your foot. From below, a wave of rats emerges and you must run before they engulf you. Gain an experience. Well, we're going to use that immediately to bring these two down to par with our strength. And then next time, we will not fail. Your turn ends. Refresh a die. Will do. Now the question is, here we are way over here.
Where should we go? Hmm. Need to find, we have not checked out the infested cart. So let's move over here. We have the farmhouse and the infested cart still. Yes, yeah, see, those great minds think alike. The cart is overturned and abandoned. There are several lock chests still inside. A small devil, clearly drunk, is sitting on a broken wine barrel. Rats are crawling all around it, busily devouring anything that is edible. We can confront the devil or steal something from the boxes. Let us get rid of this devil first, and then we will do commence with the stealing. Let us banish it with our rosary that we have. Ha ha, victory! At least in the scanning part. The symbol overwhelms the devil's measly power, so it turns and flees. Drunk as it is, it slips on spilled wine and falls from the cart head first. Discard the rosary, but gain a strength. Can only be this one. And of course we need to kill it while it's down. We are strong, actually. And we'll, we'll use this purple dye. We need to get at least a six. We did not. We got a five and an automatic success. So five brings us in at two. So we get the three successes anyway. Beast of hell, it might be, but is also drunk. You dodge his attack. Trips breaking its neck. Gain a dexterity. Will do. Let's bring this down by one. Yes. No. Let's bring this down. All right. Now, commence with the stealing. It's what we know. Of course we're just going to force them open. We are the nun. Nuns, Dilla. All right, force them open. Number of successes. We are down to just our white tight. Seven. Seven is three successes. None will stand before us. After struggling a bit, you manage to pry open one of the chests. Among used damaged goods, you find a toolbox of exceptional quality. This might prove useful. Gain toolbox 47. Interesting. Toolbox 47. But then always on the start... On turn start, you may exhaust two purple dice to gain a dollar. What's with this? all this money generating stuff? We have our stealing for that. Anyway, let's move on. The cart is overturned and abandoned. Thank you. I understand that. All right. I think we end our turn because it's not letting me click anything else. Get to remove a return cart. The infested cart is no more. Refresh a die. Done. The rat swarm is on the move. It reaches the western fields. Probably not a great thing. Over here off camera. 
I'll have to slide everything over soon, I'm sure. I'm going to employ the Abbott Costello defense against these rats. They are now out of sight, out of mind. If you can't see them, they are no longer there. See, we can just, uh, see, there you go. See, the computer knows. Just move it over and we're good. Shall we talk to the farmer while we're here? Let's do that before we head back west. Any objections? Farmhouse it is. No objections. Your first knock goes unanswered. Drowned by the bleeding of many sheep corralled near the house. Finally, the farmer lets you in. He vents his anger on you, yelling about a thief who stole one of his prized animals from his herd. You know, thieves are terrible. People that steal, awful. Just awful. You notice a small rat nest in a hole under the foundations. You'd have to crawl inside to reach it. I think we should ask about the thief. We might get some good techniques. I think it's a good idea. Let's do that. Theft can't be tolerated. It's that orphan from the outskirts south of here. She's good for nothing, just like her parents were. And now she thinks she can freely steal from me just because, what, food is short and supply? I hope those rats eat her. Well, this guy is just awful. We get to refresh a purple eye. Will do. We can give him an animal if we had one, which we don't. We can remove the rat's nest, which we might find something under there, or ask the farmer about an item. Do we have any items that we think he can talk about? Not really. Let's remove the rat's nest. If only we had a torch. I think we should move to the blacksmith next and get our torch back. All right, we will use a dexterity roll. Let's use a purple die. Looking for six or more, I think, to at least get three successes. We got exactly six, which like I said, will be three successes. There's not much space under the house, but you managed to squeeze in, killing off the rats is relatively small in this relatively small nest and easy task, the farmer braids you for taking so long, but nonetheless, he rewards you. Gain $2 and an XP. Um, that's okay. Uh, we know where this farmhouse is, and we have a special torch for him later. All right. Two more money. Should I think we should just call these torch tokens from now on. And an XP. What shall we do with our XP? Two stats down. Well, we're going to have to make room here. So let's move these two down by one. And that is that. I think we can say goodbye to the farmer. Gain an effort die. Will do. All right. So what do people think? Shall we get? We can't make it all the way to the blacksmith this turn. So I think we should, we might as well go north and check out what's up here. And then we can do our two move to get to the blacksmith next turn. Any objections to that? So off we go north. No objections. Few venture into these woods. Some say they're haunted. Flip that over. They call this place the Witchwood. Few venture here without good reason. Well, I think someone said talking it. Someone said we should be talking to the witch anyway. So let's see what's up here. The Blooming Grove. Out of tokens. Give me a second to grab some more. 
The flowers are blooming and the trees are still green in this strange grove. Is that it? That's it. Do we have a clip? Thought we had a clip. All right. Blooming Grove it is. You stand at the edge of the Witchwood, where the path starts winding between the trees. You start to follow the path, but soon it branches off in two, in two an ancient oak. The woods are dark here and silent, and neither of the choices feel welcoming. Hmm. Don't read that. Let's hope I can hear the if someone sends a follow or something. I'm sorry if I miss it. All right. So we get to choose a path flanked with mossy stones or choose the path overgrown with roots. Search around the opening of the path. Well, we might as well. Well, before we go down a path, let's search around it first. Yeah, maybe we'll search and get a clue. Agreed. It wants a knowledge test. Let's use a purple die. We get a total of six. Six. Oh, we're still short by one. That's okay. Six gets us two successes. Two successes it is. What's this? Right where the path enters the woods, someone has left a simple charm hanging from a branch. You wonder why it's here, and you decide it will be more use with you. I.e., guess what? We steal it, because that's what we do. Another talisman at six. Same as our other one. If uh, we get plus three on a test, if we ever get zero successes. Which I want to say will never happen, but you never know. All right. Maybe I'll hear it with some time. All right, moving on. We have mossy stones or we have overgrown roots. I really can't see one way or the other here. So we'll start at the top. And we are all about the strength. None Zilla will force her way through because that is what she does. I think we should use a, oh, we'll save a purple die because the other one might not be. Hmm. Let's use the purple die. Three, four, five. Five is our total. One short, two successes. You awkwardly force your way through the bushes, but in the end, you reach your goal. Before you lies the fabled grove. Ah, uh, see the roots were probably a dexterity check. So I think we picked the right one. There's, uh, there's magic in this strange place. It's like this grove forgot about the passage of time and got stuck in perpetual spring. At the center of the grove, you see a thicket of briars, and in the middle of it, there is an ancient copper sickle embedded in the tree trunk. Let's go into the grove. We don't have anything that could cut our way in, so we're just going to have to force our way in unfortunately, and we have no purple dice left. Um, I think this is an item and I really don't want to fail at this time. I say we discard this food. You know, we have the, the blacksmith was still there, but it wasn't the was it the blacksmith's son? Yes, it was the blacksmith's son that needed food. Let's gamble it. You want, yeah, I think you're right, discard the food. All right, we'll discard the food. Discarding the food, refreshing up to two dice, and we'll take one of them along for this test. Force our way in. 
That is five and a success. Five on our strength is here, which will give us two successes, plus the automatic is a total of three successes. You feel as if the thorny bushes are a living beast. You, you're actively defending yourself from actively defending itself from you. Its spiny tentacles whip and flail, tailing, tearing at your clothes and skin. Finally, you make your way to the sickle. As you pick it up, you notice that an ancient metal seems almost untouched by the ages. The light and warmth of the grove quickly start dimming as you leave. Gain the copper sickle, 52. You know, it's, you know, that's what we're all about here, is removing ancient artifacts that protect natural groves, because that's how we roll. Copper Sickle. For each dex test, we get to refresh a die, and it is a ritual item. Now, I believe it said we couldn't return to the manor to do that, but... I think, where was the, was there not another place we could? I think we might have to return to the cathedral. We'll see. Yeah, where the bishop was. We'll see. All right, gain copper sickle 52. Because it says on the back of our card as well, right? It does say, uh, when you're ready to go to the chapel in the convent to fulfill your destiny. So... We will go back there. All right. End turn. End turn. Yes. Oh, we get to remove. No more sacred grove. We destroyed it because that's what Nunzilla does. All right. It has been removed. Refresh a die. Done. Then we need to go to the chapel, which we can make because it's a move of two. So two spaces, one, two. And we will go into the chapel. And there it is, purify an artifact. I think we should just go right to that and see what happens. Does anyone disagree? Sickle, purify an item, Pagan relic crumbles to dust. Candles at the altar dim and fade as the shrine's power is spent. No more pagan items can be destroyed here. Discard the copper sickle. 52. Gain a knowledge. Will do. The aura of the second relic dissipates. The time to break the pagan power has come. Go to the chapel. Um, okay. Begin the purification ceremony. Well, I don't see why we wouldn't. Should we take a moment to meditate? That gets us back our last die. Might as well. Might as well. Ah, you see, we are not quite pure like we thought. So we actually lose a die. Wasn't the smart thing. All right, beginning the purification ceremony. Oops. No, it, it, the nun, it did not give her a specific denomination. She is uh, the denomination of the purity of fire and of the sticky fingers. Yes. There is no stopping now. It is time. I think it's time. Is it time? I think it's time. The chapel is silent. Clear 
of both men and vermin. Soft light seeps in through the stained glass windows. You kneel before the altar. You are ready. In your right hand is a cross. In your left sticky hand is a candle. Yeah, flame. It's a good sign. It's a good sign. There is much to cleanse. Yes, much, much to cleanse with fire. Ah, uh, there's so much to cleanse. You think of all the places where the pagan worship never really died. Places that you sorely attracted to devils and their rats to teach men a lesson. You turn your thoughts towards the lone tree, the blooming grove, the stone in the fields, the mystic pond, the stone circle by the river. Well, we didn't do any of these three bottom ones we definitely did these top two on the stone fields let's go to the lone tree maybe it wants you to, to identify the two items that you burn because we did the sickle and the and the flower maybe that's what it's asking for light through the stained glass shift and dances around you in colorful shards was it just a stray cloud or something more you turn around and see light forming into shapes transforming the chapel into another place the mighty tree rises before you familiar and yet it's the old tree that has always towered above the eastern fields but where you remember a dead husk there is life in it still there's life in it still. Animal skulls hang from it, and candles burn below more openly than you'd ever allow in the distance. And drums and songs, forgotten tongues resound. You know why you're here. It must be purified. There is also an empty box devoid of coin at its base. Hmm. Let the faith cleanse it. It must burn. Well, hmm. Let me think. Burn. How we roll here at the burning school of fire. Uh, not such a great roll. Four is still two successes. We'll see how that goes. I wish this toolbox was the other way around. Burn coins to get dice back. That would be much more handy. All right, so two successes confirm. You set it aflame and it burns. Amid the roaring flames, heavenly trumpets sound. Oh, is that just in our head? Or, I, you know, it's just, we're just so happy with the fire. Where before you heard drums and ancient songs, now choirs sing hymns of praise. This might be all just a figment of your imagination or a dream, but you hear them even as you find yourself back in the chapel. All right, are we going to be going through all of these? We're going to be out of dice awfully quick. All right. No problem. All right, let's go to the Blooming Grove next. The dizzying patterns of light from the new shapes around you feel like you've been transported to another place. Blooming flowers surround you. The fiery glow of the setting sun makes it hard to discern their colors and their thorny bushes seem to alienate you. You're suddenly surrounded by impenetrable woods somewhere beyond the trees. Torches are dancing, accompanied by wild music and laughter. Let the faith cleanse it or let it burn. Hmm. I think we should go with something different this time. Fire's not enough? That's a lie. Fire burns all. Number of successes. We got six, six on the flames is three successes. Note that who, who questioned the power of fire. The flowers burn, the briars burn, everything around you burns. Oh, she must be very happy. The roaring flames drown out the sounds of celebration, overpowering everything as you are returned to the chapel is still ringing in your ears. So those are the two that we definitely did. 
These are the ones that we don't know about. Once more, you're transported to a place deserving of purification. Light swirls around you. A single block of stone, monumental and ancient, rises before you. Around you, the field is strewn with dead. They wear unfamiliar armor and clothing. You barely recognize what is now the western field. In the darkness, campfires in the distance are clearly visible, and you hear the echoes of chants that may be prayers. Now, I'm looking at our sheet, and we need sevens to get three successes with knowledge. Or we need sixes to get three successes with strength. And strength is fire. And this is what we're all about. We were born in fire. And in fire we shall return. Two dice. Five is our total. That is enough for two successes. Can't believe we have to go through all of these without a rest. This is crazy. Man, this has decided just not to focus on anything. All right, then. You're, you say your prayers over the flame in your hand. You try to light the grass around the stone, but it's wet with blood. It refuses to burn. Somewhere, war horn sound, and then a roar of many voices closing in. As you return to the chapel, a, ch ch a chilling need to flee persists for a while. Your turn ends. Refreshing effort dice. Well, maybe they didn't want that particular one to burn, apparently. Oh, never mind. There is much to cleanse. You think of all the places yeah, we did this. All right, off to the Mystic Pond. Yes, always burn. Really? They're just going to give us the same... All right, again, the colorful spark shift. The water is so smooth that the ancient trees reflecting it from it create an illusion of a second forest upside down below the surface next to you stands a stone altar on it candles burn in a circle and in the middle there's a carved likeness of some forgotten false god drum beats echo through the forest well if it's a false god i think we should go with a burn Shall we use the purple dye? I think we'll use the purple dye. Good thing we use the purple dye. Five. Five means two successes. Even in this dreamlike world, you can't burn stone or water. You wave your fire about but several several of the other fires appear among the trees they're closing in from every direction you're surrounded before you can react you find yourself back in the chapel back in the chapel your fear fades your turn ends refresh and effort uh but we weren't trying to build we wanted to burn the statue not anyway You have failed in your task. Pray for assistance. No. Stone circle by the river. Is this the last place? Tall stones rise around you, and you find yourself in the middle of a circle. A row of tall figures stands just outside, clad in furs, mask. Their heads are crowned with antlers. A drum beats slowly. The ground you stand on is covered by dry flowers. In the center of the stone circle... Someone has placed a tangle of golden hay, dry flowers, and sticks as a tall person. Oh my. So, kindling in the middle 
And I think if we if we deviate now, all will be lost. Seven is three successes with an automatic success. So the the non why is this camera just guess I shouldn't complain. All right, let's not let's just move on. Uh, six gives us three successes plus the other success is four. This has got to be wonderful. Four successes. Hay burns, so do the flowers. Figures scream in anguish and drop to their knees. You stand in cleansing flames, untouched, their brightness blinding you. When you regain your sight, you're in the chapel, pinpricks of light dancing around you. There was some well, I'll place the big. I did this. All right. The land under the light of God. It is time to end this. So yes, I can only agree. Number of successes. So it's going to be played straight up. Our two dice. Final thing. Rolling dice. We get a three. That's enough for one success. See what it says. Confirm. You look around you, the chapel's quiet, the dancing lights are gone. Okay, your turn ends. All right, refresh an effort dice. Is, is it over? No, there's more to be done. You realize you're surrounded by a faint murmur of prayers. You are not alone. In the back of the chapel, some of the townsfolk have gathered. Somehow you feel their prayers empowering yours. So we can pray together. Too late, they came to pray. Repent. I agree with you. Definitely not pure yet. They must repent. Agreed. All right. Can this happen? Give me some good dice, some out of focus dice, out of focus dice, say seven, seven means three successes. They are reluctant to accept your judgment, but as you speak longer of their sins and guilt, one by one, they repent, praying for forgiveness. The light intensifies soon. It's hard to keep your eyes open. Your turn ends. Replace the chapel as indicated. Goodness gracious. All right. Large giant angel figure. No problem. Will do. Okay. It's true. It's true. They should have stolen more stuff. It never ends. All right. Refresh an effort die. Will do. We are all set for this turn. Sudden flash of light and a sound like a mighty trumpet startle you. But the feeling is quickly replaced by a strange calm. Before you st stands the luminous figure of the Lord's angel. It speaks to you, and its voice rings with hope. In this time of trials, it says, there is still hope for your land. Prove to me and to God that there is still faith here. So, we can use our knowledge with an item that we don't have, or we can use our strength with an item that we don't have. Clearly, I like where you're going with that. Clearly, it is a false angel and is just trying to test our faith of fire. We do not have a weapon. We will just have to fight it with our might. Once again, 
all sorts of dice rolls. That was terrible. Two gives us a success of one, and an automatic success gives us a two. You are no match for... See, we I lost faith for a moment is the problem. You are no match for godly light. Despite your best efforts, you find yourself on your knees. Oh, child, it says. The angel with sorrow in its voice. Despite your faith, there is so much you don't know. You can believe that. Light is blinding and overwhelming. All around you, the valley, all around the valley, the people drop to their knees, watching a luminous figure break through the chapel's roof and float over the valley. Its wings beat once, and just as the vile, and just as the vile talisman you destroyed crumbled, the devil crumbles. It beats its wings twice, and all over the land, rats flee in terror drown themselves in the river, or burn to ashes when they find no shelter from the light. Thrice and the lone tree crumbles, and the circle by the river and the shrines once kept for tradition's sake, nothing impure remains. The land is clean. Inside the ruined chapel, light shines straight at you for all to see. You stand up. You know what comes next. Is it, is it talking to us or is this? Nope, this is something. End of the scenario. You win. The town of Slu has been transformed. The rat menace has ended. And of course, burned away by divine light and fire. But that is not all. Gone are the harvest rites and relics of old. Bells ring over the valley, bringing the faithful to the Holy Mass. Thanks are given to Slew's continued survival for bountiful harvests, for truth, for the truth that only through God can lasting prosperity be achieved. A newly consecrated stones from the pagan shrines and circles above the from, sorry, from the pagan shrines and circles. Above the altar, a newly built stained glass window shows everyone the scene where once a simple nun convenes with angels, picks their pockets, and burns their robes, and cast down, cast down devils. Most have submitted to this new order, happy to live a life of peace, work, and prayer. Not all, of course, wanted to submit. Alas, no chronicle recounts how the town fared when some years later the pestilence came. Such was her conquest that few were left with the strength to pen proper chronicles. So yes, Nunzilla, the rat exterminator, lives on very rich, very rich. Probably moves to the bigger city to uh, build her own church. So, I think this works great as a solo experience in the in what we've done here today. I'm not sure how interesting it would be playing with other people. Because it's very much, it can be very easily, you know, uh, quarterbacked or taken over, alpha gamed by, you know, oh, we need to do this. You should go here. You should go do that. That whole cycling through doing the rolls over and over at the end was a bit tedious. If it gave you some sort of clue as to what, I guess the last one did. I guess if we read them more carefully and picked out which ones we should have used, it might have been better. This is the key system here, is this, this skill thing. There is, there is a competitive... Yeah, you're supposed to get your... Yeah, you're right. You're supposed to get your mission done before everyone else. So I guess that might be all right. 
and it might be interesting how you uncover other people's clues like if they're going for townspeople and you're over here uncovering townspeople and it's just not what they need and you sort of can figure out which way you need to go you're right it is competitive but i really like i was saying i really love this skill system and getting successes and increasing your stats that is cool does anyone have any questions i think we are done here for today i am going to play through the other two missions though because it is sort of a whole linked story so we'll go on to the next one which is such is her conquest and we'll play that next time we get together So that is that. So like I usually say, my name is Michael Walker. I am one half of So Very Wrong About Games. We have a podcast that comes out every week. We are in a little bit of a transition period. So uh, it's been off and on for a few weeks, but uh, we've been putting out a little bit of content like here on Twitch and smaller episodes. We should be back to full episodes next week, but no promises. Let me pop up some, some links in case people are interested. There are some links you can click on if you want some more information. Let us check on who we should raid. Where am I here? There we go. Who is on right now? A typical joke is, well, there's these so very wrong about games guys, but I don't like them. Let's go to Gen Con TV only because I know they're not super crass. So we will click here. Any questions come up? That was good. Any questions come up? Oh, that was good fun. And we're all set. Like I said, we got Quacks of Quiglinburg again, so we'll probably unbox that and play the second one in the next few days. See you next time. Peace! That's true. And uh, virtually, like, you don't have to worry about knocking all the cards Ooh, around. Job would, would be really nice to get Nick to do for us. <laughs> To... We could get him to 3D print like a plastic board. Yeah. Like that.